Guide to Islamic Finance, Part 2. Compiled by Hussein Fahmi. Classification of Reba. 1. The first and primary type is called Reba and Nazir or Reba al Jahliya. 2. The second type is called Reba al Fadl, Reba and Nakd or Reba al Bayi. Since the first type was specified in the Quranic verses before the sayings of the Noble Prophet, this type was termed as Reba al Quran. However, the second type was not understood by the Quranic verses alone but also had to be explained by the Noble Prophet. It is also called Reba al Hades. Reba and Nazir. This is the real and primary form of Reba. Since the verses of Noble Quran has directly rendered this type of Reba as Haram. Similarly, since only this type was considered Reba in the Dark Ages, it has earned the name of Reba al Jahiliyyah. Imam Abu Bakr Hassas Razi has outlined a complete and prohibiting legal definition of Reba and Nazir in the following words. That kind of loan where specified repayment period and an amount in excess of capital is predetermined. One of the hadith quoted by Ali ibn At Talib, RAA, has defined Reba and Nazir in similar words. The noble prophet said, Every loan that draws interest is Reba. The famous Sahabi Fazal ibn Ubaid has also defined Reba in similar words, Every loan that draws profit is one of the forms of Reba. The famous Arab scholar Abu Ishaq Azajjaj also defines Reba in the following words, Every loan that draws more than its actual amount. Reba and Nazir refers to the addition of the premium which is paid to the lender in return for his waiting as a condition for the loan and is technically the same as interest. The prohibition of Reba and Nazir is one of those issues which have been confirmed in the revealed laws of all prophets, as some of the Old Testaments has rendered Reba as Haram, see Exodus 22-25, Leviticus 25 hours 35 minutes minus 36, Deuteronomy 23-20, Psalms 15-5, Proverbs 28-8, Nehemiah 5-7 and Eachiel 18-8, 13-17 and 2212. The Noble Quran has also stated the prohibition of Reba in various verses has warned those who persist in practicing it of a war which is certain to be declared on them by Allah himself and his messenger and has seriously threatened those engaged as writer, witness and dealer in Reba transactions. These verses and our hadith will be discussed at length in a separate chapter called The Prohibition of Reba in the Light of Noble Quran and Hadith. According to the above definition of Reba and Nazir, the giving and taking of any excess amount in exchange of a loan at an agreed rate is included in interest irrespective whether at a high or low rate. It has been proven through Hadith that the noble prophet paid excess at the loan repayment time but since this excess was not paid through an agreed rate, it cannot be called interest. This clarifies that the word draws in the Hadith definition the loan that draws interest is Reba has been used to highlight the giving and taking of excess amount through an agreed rate in the loan contract. Due to this, Imam Abu Bakr Hassas has added the word condition to the definition. The fact that Reba and Nazir is categorically haram has never been disputed in the Muslim community. In short, the Reba of today which is supposed to be the pivot of human economy and features in discussions on the problem of interest is nothing but this Reba the unlawfulness of which stands proved on the authority of the seven verses of the Quran, of more than forty hadith and of the consensus of the Muslim community. Wisdom behind the prohibition of Reba and Nazir. First of all, we should realize that there is nothing in the entire creation of the world, which has no goodness or utility at all. But it is commonly recognized in every religion and community that things which have more benefits and less harms are called beneficial and useful. Conversely, things that cause more harm and less benefit are taken to be harmful and useless. Even the Noble Quran, while declaring liquor and gambling to be haram, proclaimed that they do hold some benefits for people but the curse of sins they generate is far greater than the benefits they yield. Therefore, these cannot be called good or useful. On the contrary, taking these to be acutely harmful and destructive, it is necessary that they be avoided. The case of Reba and Nazir is not different. 
Here the consumer of Reba does have some casual and transitory profits apparently coming to him, but its curse in this world and in the hereafter is much too severe as compared to this benefit. The Reba consumer suffers such a spiritual and moral loss that it virtually takes away the great quality of being human from him. An intelligent person who compares things in terms of their profit and loss, harm and benefit can hardly include things of casual benefit with an everlasting loss in the list of useful things. Similarly no sane and just person will say that personal and individual gain which causes loss to the whole community or group is useful. In theft and robbery for example, the gain of the gangster and the take of the thief is all too obvious but it is certainly harmful for the entire community since it ruins its peace and sense of security. Reba al -Fadl. The second classification of Reba is Reba al -Fadl. Since the prohibition of this Reba has been established on Sana, it is also called Reba al-Hades. Reba al fadl actually means that excess which is taken in exchange of specific homogeneous commodities and encountered in their hand-to-hand -hand purchase and sale as explained in the famous Hadith, the Prophet said, sell gold in exchange of equivalent gold, sell silver in exchange of equivalent silver, sell dates in exchange of equivalent dates, sell wheat in exchange of equivalent wheat, sell salt in exchange of equivalent salt sell barley in exchange of equivalent barley, but if a person transacts in excess, it will be usury, reba. However, sell gold for silver any way you please on the condition it is hand to hand, spot, and sell barley for date any way you please on the condition it is hand to hand, spot. This hadith enumerates six different commodities namely. 1. Gold. 2. Silver. 3. Dates. 4. Wheat. 5. Salt. 6. Barley. These six commodities can only be bought and sold in equal quantities and on spot. An unequal sale or a deferred sale of these commodities will constitute Reba. These six commodities in fic terminology are called Amwali Rib or Eu. Does this Hadith apply only to the items mentioned in it? Does it concern sales of barley or wheat but not rice? of dates but not raisins? A complete legal definition differs in every fic. Scholars such as Ta'uz and Katada hold that Reba al fadl includes these specified types only. However a majority of Islamic scholars believe that some other commodities should also be included. In order to answer the question, which other commodities should be included, some fix hold that the characteristics which are common amongst these items can be used as basis, elat, for Reba al fadl An elat is the attribute of an event that entails a particular divine ruling in all cases possessing that attribute, it is the basis for applying analogy. Reba e goods are therefore goods that exhibit one of the efficient causes occasioning application of Reba rules. Various schools define these causes differently. Imam Abu Hanifa Imam Abu Hanifa sees only two common characteristics namely. 1. Weight. 2. Volume. Meaning all these six goods are sold by either weight or volume. Therefore all those commodities, which have weight or volume and are being exchanged, with the same commodity will fall under the rules of Reba al fadl Imam Shafi. The two characteristics observed by Imam Shafi are 1. Medium of exchange or 2. Eatable. Therefore this law will apply on everything edible or having the natural ability of becoming a medium of exchange, currency. Imam Malik Imam Malik identified the following two characteristics. 1. Eatables and 2. Preservable. Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal Three citations have been related to him. I, first citation conforms to the opinion of Imam Abu Hanifa. Two, second citation conforms to the opinion of Imam Shafi. Three, third citation includes three characteristics at the same time namely edible, weight and volume. After a detailed study of the above schools of thought, it has been declared by Islamic scholars that if a commodity bears both of the two characteristics namely, it has weight and can be used as a medium of exchange, then the following two kinds of transactions are not allowed when the same goods are being exchanged. 
a deferred sale of goods, a deferred sale is when the goods are returned, or paid for after some undetermined period. A sale of unequal quantities of the same goods. However, when only one of the two characteristics is present to term the sale as Reba al Fadl, then exchange of unequal goods are allowed but deferred sale is not allowed. Wisdom behind the prohibition of Reba al Fadl. The prohibition of Reba al Fadl is intended to ensure justice and remove all forms of exploitation through unfair exchanges and to close all back doors to Reba and Nazir because in the Islamic Sharia, Anything that serves as a means to the unlawful is also unlawful. The Laws of Reba al-Fadl After closely analyzing the meaning and interpretation of the above hadith and their explanation in further hadith along with issues raised in reference work of Hanafi Fiqh, the following rules and laws governing Reba al-Fadl are derived. 1. It is evident that the exchange of homogeneous commodities will only be required if they differ in quality and characteristic example different genus of rice and wheat, superior quality gold and inferior quality gold, mineral salt and sea salt etc. The exchange of any of these six commodities with itself, but differing in types, quality, which is called barter in modern terminology, even when considering market rate, is prohibited in unequal amount. The reason being that by exchanging these commodities in unequal amounts there is a fear of developing the rationale in a person eventually leading to interest, sued, base earnings and illegal benefits. Such transactions might also lead to defrauding. For example, a shrewd trader may claim that a kilogram of a specific brand of wheat is equivalent to three kilograms of the other kind because of the excellence of its quality or this unique piece of gold ornament is equivalent in value to twice its weight in gold, in such transactions there undoubtedly is defrauding of people and harm to them. As a step to prevent this state, the Sharia has made it a law that exchange of any of these six commodities with itself but differing in quality, is allowed in only one of the following forms. a. Any difference in value quality should be ignored and the commodities should be exchanged in equal amounts, equal weight and volume. b. Instead of direct exchange of commodities of the same kind, a person should sell his commodity against cash at the market value and buy someone else's commodity in exchange of cash proceeds at the market value. 2. One of the ways of transacting commodities of the same kind is that a person has a raw material and someone else has a product made of that material and both decide to exchange their product. In this case, one was to see whether a. The characteristics of this product has been totally changed by the industry. For example the remarkable changes that transform raw cotton into cloth or iron into machinery. In this case, it is permissible to transact lesser amount of cloth against greater amount of raw cotton or raw iron having more weight against machinery having lighter weight. b. Little difference has been made to its original form after its formulation, for example gold which changes its shape in the form of jewelry. In this case, the Sharia holds that such a transaction should not happen in the first place or if it does. The exchange should be in equal weights in order to discourage unfair deals. Another alternative would be to sell gold against cash and the cash proceeds are used to buy the needed jewelry. This is because it is not possible in a barter transaction, except for an expert, to visualize the fair equivalent of one commodity in terms of all other goods. Hence, the equivalent may be established only approximately thus leading to some injustice to one or the other party. The use of money could therefore help reduce the possibility of an unfair exchange. 3. Different commodities can be unequally exchanged but deferred payment is not allowed. For example 1 kg wheat can be sold against 2 kg date or 1 gram of gold can be exchanged against 4 grams of silver on the condition that they are spot transactions, reason being that such a transaction will surely be carried on the market rate. For example a person who wants to exchange silver for gold on spot will only transact as per the market rate. However, if the transaction is on credit, there is a possibility, no matter how minor, of stepping into interest that cannot be ignored.
For example a buyer who has traded 80 dollars silver on credit today on the understanding that it will be exchanged against 2 dollars gold after a month, has in fact no means to find in advance that 40 dollars silver will be equivalent to 1 dollar gold after a month. Therefore this ascertaining of value in advance actually signifies its roots in interest and gambling. Similarly the seller who has accepted credit has in fact yielded to gambling by hoping that the ratio of gold and silver might come down from 140 to 135. The law of exchanging different commodities only at spot has been established due to this reason. The general conditions of sale, however, should be borne in mind while making a trade transaction so that the goods are specified in addition to the cash aspect of the transaction. The correct way of specifying is that gold and silver should be under the possession of the sellers or delivered at the place of contract because both goods have the original, natural, price, which cannot be specified until they are delivered. This rule applies to only exchange of gold and silver. Other goods can be exchanged against each other without delivery and can be specified any other way but will be restricted to cash transaction. For example Zaid made a spot sale of 1 kg wheat to Bakar with 2 kg salt against future delivery after having identified their goods, this transaction is allowed in Sharia since it meets both conditions. The transaction is on spot. It is also specified. However, if Zaid was selling 1 tilla gold to Bakar against 40 tilla silver, then it is necessary that both take delivery of their purchased goods at the place of contract because without delivery, goods cannot be specified. To sum up, the Hanafi jurists maintain that in case of commodities that weight or measure, it is illegal to transact unequally or on credit. But in case of different commodities unequal exchange is legal but credit remains illegal, the transaction in this case too should be spot. Commercial Interest and Usury in the 17th century, two new technical terms of interest emerged after the establishment of banking system, namely 1. Tijati Sood, commercial interest, interest paid on loan taken for productive and profitable purposes. 2. Safi Sood, usury, interest paid on loan taken for personal need and expenses. The background of both types the present-day banking system, which has given interest the moral and legal license, is the backbone of the prevalent capitalism. When Muslim countries became subjugated to West in their economic field, some westernized Muslims in the 19th century, on one side, saw the increasing progress of the West in trade and industry and on the other side saw the shattering economic condition of fellow Muslims' states. They also became conscious of the fact that banking is inevitable in the field of trade and industry not only on national level but also internationally. This prompted them to say that only usury is haram, illegal, but not commercial interest because rendering commercial interest haram would pose irresolvable problems to their way up to industrialization and economic progress. They only included usury in the term riba as categorically prohibited in the noble Quran and Sunnah and freed commercial interest from it calling it totally different from the western concept of interest. Therefore, it was concluded that the prohibition of riba was restricted to usury while commercial interest was perfectly Islamic. There are two schools of thought on this issue. A detailed analysis of their arguments is discussed as under. 1. First school. This school presents two arguments to support their point that only usury, not commercial interest, is prohibited in Islam. Argument 1. Reba as practiced during the days of the Prophet was only usury. Counter argument. This claim is groundless, since Islam when prohibiting something does not only prohibit one form of it that is prevalent, but all forms that might erupt in future. The changed state does not change the ruling for example the noble Quran has prohibited the following. A. Liquor, karma, during the time of profit its form and the way of production was totally different from that of the present day liquor but the ruling remains unchanged even though the form has changed. B. Pork, kin's ear, irrespective how clean the present day breeding of pigs in high class farms may be, pork will stay prohibited and cannot be rendered whole legal. C. Corruption, immorality, al-fatur, 
although a lot of sophisticated ways have been developed of this evil from the time of Quranic revelations prohibiting it, the ruling stands forever. The same applies to interest and gambling. By claiming that it was in a different form during Prophet's time does not change its ruling. It remains unchanged just as in case of Karma. Kinzir and Al-Fashur Argument 2. Commercial interest did not exist in the days of Prophet. Counter-argument. This claim is also wrong. If one glances through the Islamic and pre-Islamic history of Arabia, it will be evident that the interest type at that time was not restricted to usury but loans were granted for commercial and profitable purposes. To quote some examples. A. The tribe of Umro bin Emir used to take interest from the tribe of Mughara. At the advent of Islam, Mughara owed heavy interest to Umro bin Emir. In this narration, the transaction of interest between two tribes of Arabia have been pointed out who actually operated as trading companies. Both tribes were very wealthy. Could it be that two wealthy tribes transacted interest just for personal need and expenses? The interest was simply commercial. B. History of the city of Tef tells us that it was only second to maker in trade, their main exports being liquor, raisins, currants, wheat, wood etc., an industry, major being leather and dyeing. The tribe of Saqif, Jewish tribe, advanced cash on interest, not only to the natives of Tef, but the business community of Maker as well example the tribe of Mughera who were their permanent customer. This advancement, which was not only restricted to cash but also to commodities between wealthy tribes of Tf and Maker who were usually traders and businessmen, was only for their commercial purposes and not for their consumption and personal needs. One of the ways of receiving interest was to double the principal amount plus interest in case of non-payment of loan and this practice was applied to both cash as well as commodities. They had become accustomed to it. At the time of signing the peace treaty with the people of Tef, the Prophet imposed conditions, i. total elimination of interest-based transactions. 2. Giving up of interest owed to and from them. C. The practice of making two trade trips, one to Yemen in winters and the other to Syria in summer was started by the tribe of Quraysh of Mecca. These trips proved to be very profitable especially since being custodians of Kaaba. Quraysh were looked at with respect, granted special concessions and protected in transit which was a necessity at that time. This way business and trade became their only means of livelihood. Investment became the order of the day in which women also took part and its circulation flourished and multiplied. With this background in mind, one can easily visualize that the city of Maker more or less became the clearing house or the banking city and accustomed to their related amenities. It was only natural that interest was one of them. Since they advanced cash for commercial purposes and charged compound interest in case of default by the traders, and this earning of interest was their trade, they argued when the noble Quran rendered interest haram, illegal, that the transaction of interest-based loans is a type of trade in which the return on capital can be earned as in the case of rent received from assets. They could not differentiate between excess in shape of profit during a trade and excess in the shape of interest at the time of repayment of loan. d. Therefore in pre-Islamic days, we see that Sedna Abbas bin Abdul Muttlib and Sedna Khalid bin Walid formed the company with joint capital whose prime business was cash advancement on interest. Similarly Sedna Usman was one of the wealthy businessmen who lent money on interest. There were many other traders dealing full-time in interest extending a network of interest-based transactions. e. The way Sidna Zubair bin Am, who was famous for his trustworthiness, operated was quite similar to that of modern banking system. People used to deposit with him their capital as a mina, trust or security. However, Sidna Zubair used to make it clear to the depositors that he would accept the deposits as a loan and not as security, a mina because he knew that he will not be fully liable according to Sharia in case these amunas got destroyed but in case of having them as a loan, he will be fully liable to pay them back. He was afraid that in case of losing any deposited amount, his image as the trustworthy caretaker would be damaged. He therefore used the term alone for such deposits to ensure guaranteed payment so that he enjoys everyone's confidence in him.
Another reason for using the word loan was to legalize trading and earning profits on such deposits. Because if he got those deposits as a manner, he could not utilize it for his business, as it is not permissible in Sharia to use a manner. This clearly shows that borrowing in those days was not only for consumption purposes but for commercial purposes as well. Sidna Zubair left a will with his son Sidna Abdullah bin Zubair before he died to sell his property to repay the loan, if required. The total amount calculated after his death for repayment by his son. It is obvious that a rich sahaba such as Sidna Zubair did not owe this loan out of any need, rather it was an investment of securities that was circulating in trade. Another clear argument. Sidna Abu Huraira narrated that the Prophet said, he who does not abandon Mokibara, will be caught in a war against Allah and his Prophet. In this narration Prophet has rendered Mokibara illegal just like Reba and has declared a war against those who indulge in it just like Reba. What is Mokibara? It's actually a division of the crop by agreement between the landlord and cultivator in which the landlord gives his land to cultivator for cultivation purposes in order to get his pre-agreed amounts of the crop irrespective whether the production is low or high. For example lends his land to be for cultivation on the condition that he will get a predetermined portion on each crop example five mounds. Such a transaction is called Mokabara. Prophet had called Mokabara a form of Reba. Now one should think over whether he referred to usury as the form of riba or he referred to commercial interest. It is similar to commercial interest as both mokibara and commercial interest used for productive businesses. Whereas in the case of usury, the borrower uses the loan for personal use and not productive purposes. To sum up, profit included mokibara in riba that has no similarity with usury, rather with commercial interest. The fact that during Prophet's time, the dealing in commercial interest was common is proven and also that this form is prohibited. 2. Second School This group present two arguments justifying their point of view that are mentioned below. Argument 1. The factor leading to prohibition of Reba, interest, is that if a borrower faces a loss, he still has to pay an excess amount over the principal, which is basically an exploitation of his need whereas the lender on the other hand gets an increase on his surplus capital without any effort which is unjust. But this factor is not found in commercial interest since both the borrower as well as the lender gets profit, the borrower on the amount he has circulated in business and the lender in shape of interest over his principal amount. Therefore, no one faces unfairness or injustice in this transaction. Counter-argument. This argument is quite appealing and attractive at the face value, as it is based on the assumption that no one suffers in case of commercial interest. But after analysis, it is proven that the noble Quran has not only prohibited that one party faces a loss and the other gets profit but has also prohibited one party getting confirmed profit and the other party unconfirmed profit from the same investment as we have studied above in the case of Mokabara. Argument 2. This argument is based on the Quranic verse O believers do not devour one another's possession wrongfully, rather than that. Let there be trading by mutual consent, Al Nisa verse 29. In the above verse, the noble Quran has prohibited wrongful devouring which will only arise if the consent of one of the parties is absent and naturally the party who is devouring consents, the other party never consents, he only gives in since he has no other option. So we come to the conclusion that if the consent and satisfaction of both parties is present in a deal, it cannot be called wrongful devouring. According to this logic, commercial interest is permissible since the mutual consent is present of both parties whereas Reba is prohibited only when one party is getting the excess out of his selfishness and the other party is encountering the loss, as he has no other alternative. Counter-argument, this argument is of superficial nature. Mutual consent is not the criteria to render anything prohibited or not in Islam. Would the act of adultery be allowed if the condition of mutual consent is fulfilled? Similarly, there are many transactions in business, which are rendered illegal even with mutual consent. For reference see Abwab al Ayo al butla where Muhakla and Talki al-Jalab being forms of Bay'i where the mutual consent and satisfaction is present and is prohibited by profit.
Similarly, mutual consent is present in commercial interest and gambling too but in spite of that, it has been prohibited. Therefore no such criteria exist in the legality of any transaction that both parties approve, rather the approval should be on the transaction, which has not been prohibited by Sharia. To quote the words of the Noble Quran except the legitimate business. Simple and compound interest. Reba and Nazia can be classified into two types. Simple interest, Sudi Mufrid. Compound interest, Sudi Murakab. Definition of simple interest, interest calculated only on the initial investment. Definition of compound interest, reinvestment of each interest payment on money invested, to earn more interest. During the pre-Islamic era, when a borrower used to fail to pay back the principal and interest charged on him, then the lender used to extend the loan on the condition that the interest will also become part of the loan, essentially compound interest. The following verses of the Noble Quran were revealed in order to stop the people from such practices, O believers, take not doubled and redoubled interest, and fear God so that you may prosper. Zurah Al-Imran, verses 131. To eradicate this abominable practice of the period of ignorance, this verse was revealed. By mentioning the practice of doubling and redoubling, it was condemned and declared unlawful in view of its adverse impact on the community and the selfishness that it bred. It does not mean that if there is no doubling and redoubling, that is, if there is simple interest, in today's jargon, then it is lawful. No. In Zura al-Baqarah, the cow, and Zura and Nisa, the women, the prohibition of interest in its entirety and in absolute terms is clearly mentioned, whether or not there is doubling and redoubling. Since the aforementioned verse prohibits the compound interest only, some people misinterpret it even today that compound interest alone is forbidden in Islam, not the simple interest. They fail to see that there is absolute prohibition of simple interest in a number of other Quranic verses. The reason that the above verse specifically uses the words doubled and redoubled interest is to highlight the shameful aspect of compound interest and not to limit the scope of riba only to compound interest. This is similar to Allah's command do not bargain on my orders for paltry gains in this world. The reason for mentioning paltry gains is that even if all conceivable material goods and luxuries of this world are obtained in exchange for ignoring Allah's commands, even then this is a paltry gain. It does not obviously mean that it is prohibited to obtain paltry gains but permissible to obtain, by one standard or judgment, a hefty price. Similarly, in the ayat under consideration, the mention of doubling and redoubling is to condemn the shameful practice rather than limit its permissibility. Verses on Absolute Prohibition of Simple and Compound Interest O believers, fear God and give up the interest that remains outstanding, that is whether it is simple interest or multiplied interest, if you are believers. Zuran al-Baqarah, verse 278, If you do not do so, then be sure of being at war with God and his messenger. But, if you repent, you can have your principal, only, not any kind of interest or premium, neither should you commit injustice nor should you be subjected to it. Zuran al-Baqarah, verse 279. The above two verses demand to abandon the amount of riba and directs that only the principal amount should be paid back, nothing in excess. The second verse explains that any excess on principal, no matter how insignificant, is cruel. The following hadith also proves that both simple and compound interest are forbidden. Listen. All riba liable to you in the pre-Islamic days have been completely eliminated. You have to pay back the principal amount only neither hurt someone nor get hurt by someone. And the first reaper to be completely eliminated is Abbas bin Mutlibs. The above evidence proves that the claim that only compound interest is prohibited and any reba less than that is allowed in Islam, is wrong. Any amount in excess of the principle fixed in the contract of a loan is called reba and nazir. If simple interest is accepted, it can also be used to give out additional loans, which will again pay out simple interest. In effect, the interest will keep on becoming part of the principal, which is essentially compound interest. Section 3. Islamic Contract 
In Islamic jurisprudence what is the ruling of putting a condition on a contract or agreement? There are four basic rules for judging the validity of conditions in a contract. 1. A condition, which is not against the contract, is a valid condition. 2. A condition, which seems to be against the contract, but it is in the market practice, that type of condition is not void. If its voidness is not proven with the clear injunctions of the noble Quran and Sunnah. For example, a buyer's an air conditioner on a condition that the seller will provide him five year guarantee and one year free service. This type of condition does not invalidate the contract. 3. A condition that is against the contract and not in the practice of market but it is in favor of one of the contractors or subject matter, this type of condition is void. For example if a says he sells a car with a condition that he will use it on a fixed date every month, this contract will be void. 4. A condition, which is against the contract, not in the market practices and not in favor of any contractor, is not a void condition. Now a question arises what is the ruling of void condition, whether it invalidates the contract or not? The answer is that there is a detail about the impacts of void condition. Sometimes a void condition invalidates the contract and sometimes it does not invalidate the contract, however, the condition itself is annulled. To elaborate this, Islamic jurists and scholars have written that the compensation, yakud muawada, like sale, purchase, lease agreements become void by putting void condition. However, non-compensatory, voluntarily, agreements, yakud gamuawada, like contract of loan, Qadi Husayna, do not become void because of void condition. The void condition, however, becomes itself ineffective. For example if a gives to be a loan with a condition of premium at the time of repayment, this condition of interest is void. However, this condition does not invalidate the contract, therefore all transaction done by this borrowed money, will be valid but the condition of interest itself is revoked, therefore B is not liable for the payment of interest. Rights, Responsibility and Obligation in a Contract In Islamic fiqh, some contracts are such that rights and obligations are also attached to the agent doing the contract on behalf of the contracting party example. Sales contract, Ijara, Istizna. Salam etc. while in others principal has all the responsibilities, rights and obligations example nikah. Sale. Sale, bi, is commonly defined in sharia as the exchange of a thing of value by another thing of value with mutual consent. More specifically it means the sale of a commodity in exchange of cash. 1. Valid sale, bi sahih. A sale becomes valid if the following elements are present below. Contract, Act Subject Matter, Mabi Price, Taman Possession or Delivery, Kabza 2. Void, Non-existing Sale, Bay Ibatil Sale will be void if any one of the conditions of offer and acceptance, 1.1, conditions of buyer and seller, 1.2, and sold good conditions, 2.1 to 2.5, are not complied with. In a void sale, the buyer does not have title to subject matter and seller does not have title to price. Both subject matter and price cannot be used lawfully. The produce of both shall be unlawful. 3. Existing sale but void due to defect, bay I facet. Sale will exist but will be void due to defect if the conditions of contract, 1.3, sold good conditions, 2.6 and 2.7 and conditions of price, 3.1 and 3.2, are not complied with. However, if the defect is rectified the sale becomes valid. In a facet sale, the buyer should not possess the subject matter. If possessed with the consent of the seller, title or ownership will pass to the buyer but usage of subject matter will be impermissible. He must return it to the seller. 4. Valid but disliked sale, Bayam crew. A sale will be mkru when the transaction is complete and one gets possession of the goods but is disliked example sale after juma as an, sale after hoarding or where a third party intervenes to buy something which was under negotiation of sale between other parties. Types of Sales 
following are the common types of sales. 1. Bayim Uzawama, it refers to normal sale, in which cost price is not known. 2. Bayim Urabeha, it refers to a sale in which cost and sale price is known to the buyer. 3. Bayim Ukiada, it refers to barter sale excluding currency sale. 4. Bayi Surf, it refers to the sale of gold, silver and currency. 5. Bayi Salam, it is a kind of sale in which payment is spot while the delivery of the good is deferred. 6. Bayi Stizna, it refers to such sale in which commodity is transacted before it comes into existence. It is basically an order to manufacture. 7. Bayi Muajjal, it refers to such sale in which payment is delivery is spot while payment is deferred but cost is not known. Valid sale. A valid sale has four big elements. 1. Contract or transaction, act. 1.1 offer and acceptance, ajabo kobul, the term offer means that one person proposes to either sell his commodity to another person or buy from him and acceptance means that the person who has been offered gives his approval of the proposal. Offer and acceptance are always done in past tense example I have sold or I have purchased etc. There are two ways of doing it. 1.1.1 Oral, Quali, by saying. 1.1.2 Implied, Ishara, by indicating. This is of two types. 1.1.2 A Credit Sale, Istijra, Example Settlement of the Bill at the End of the Month. 1.1.2 B hand to hand sale, tati, exchange of money with goods without uttering ajabo kobil for procedure adopted in contemporary stores. 1.2 Buyer and seller, muta aquadine, both must be. 1.2.1 Sane, should be mentally sound at the time of contract. 1.2.2 Mature, should be adult, however, if minor, must understand the nature of transaction. 1.3 Conditions of Contract, Shara'iti Act. 1.3.1 Sale must be non-contingent, the delivery of the sold commodity to the buyer must be certain and should not depend on a contingency or chance. Example A sells his car stolen by some anonymous person to be who purchases it in the hope that he will manage to recover it. The sale is void. 1.3.1 A Unconditional Contract. The sale must be unconditional for example. A buys a car from B with a condition that B will employ his son in his firm. The sale is conditional and hence invalid. 1.3.1 B Under reasonable conditions, the conditions which do not go against the contract for example it tells B to deliver the goods within a month, the sale is valid. 1.3.1 C Under unreasonable condition but in market practice. If a sale is under unreasonable condition but is in market practice, the sale is valid. For example a buys a refrigerator from B with a condition that B undertakes its free service for two years. The condition being recognized as a part of the transaction, is valid and the sale is lawful. 1.3.2 Sale must be immediate, the sale must be instant and absolute. Thus a sale attributed to a future date or a sale contingent on a future event is void. If the parties wish to effect a valid sale, they will have to effect it afresh when the future date comes or the contingency actually occurs. Example A says to be on the 1st of January, I sell my car to you on the 1st of February. The sale is void, because it is attributed to a future date. Similarly, if A says to be, if X party wins the elections, my car stands sold to you, the sale is void because it is contingent on a future event. 2. Sold good or subject matter, mu b. 2.1 Existable, the subject matter of sale must exist at the time of sale. Thus, a thing which has not yet come into existence cannot be sold. If a non-existent thing has been sold, even with mutual consent, the sale is void according to Sharia. Example A sells the unborn calf of his cow to B. The sale is void. 2.2 Valuable, the subject of sale must be a property of value. 
thus a thing having no value according to the usage of trade example a leaf or a stone on a roadside cannot be sold or purchased. 2.3 Usable The subject of sale should not be a thing which is not used except for a haram purpose, like pork, alcohol etc. 2.4 Capable of ownership slash title The subject matter should not be anything which is not capable of ownership, title for example sea or sky. 2.5 Capable of delivery slash possession, for example an unconstructed building, cannot be possessed since it is non-existent. 2.6 Specific and quantified, the subject of sale must be specifically known and identified either by pointing or by detailed specification that can distinguish it from other things, which are not sold. Example There is a building comprising of a number of apartments built in the same pattern. A the owner of the building says to B, I sell one of these apartments to you, B accepts. The sale is void unless the apartment intended to be sold is specifically identified or pointed out to the buyer. 2.7 Seller must have title and risk, the subject matter of sale must be in the ownership of the seller at the time of sale. Thus what is not owned by the seller cannot be sold. If he sells something before acquiring its ownership and risk, the sale is void. Example A sells to be a car which is presently owned by C but A is hopeful that he will buy it from C and shall deliver it to B subsequently. The sale is void, because the car was not owned by A at the time of sale. The speculation in shares is another example. 3. Price, Tamman 3.1. Quantified. Maloom. The measuring unit of the price should be known example currency etc. 3.2. Specified and certain. Mutation. For a sale to be valid, the price should be ascertained and specified example the total amount etc. If the price is uncertain, the sale is void. Example A says to B, if you pay within a month, the price is 50 but if you pay after two months, the price is 55. B agrees. The price in this case is uncertain and therefore the sale is void unless any one of the two alternatives is agreed upon by the parties at the time of sale. 4. Delivery or possession, CABSA. The subject of sale must be in the physical or constructive possession of the seller when he sells it to another person. This is done only in respect of movable goods, not immovable. 4.1 Physical, Hakiki. For example A has purchased a car from B. B has not yet delivered it to A or to his agent. However, A cannot sell the car to C. If he sells it before taking its delivery from B, the sale is void. Constructive, Hakmi, constructive possession means a situation where the possessor has not taken the physical delivery of the commodity. Yet the commodity has come into his control and all the rights and liabilities of the commodity are passed on to him, including the risk of its destruction. For example A has purchased a car from B. B after identifying the car has placed it in a garage to which A has free access and B has allowed him to take the delivery from that place whenever he wishes. Thus the risk of the car has passed on to A. The car is in the constructive possession of A. If a sells the car to C without acquiring physical possession, the sale is valid. Oral, coli, in past tense, credit sale, istijra, example settlement at the end of the month, A, cash sale, tati, example as in supermarkets, B, implied, ishara, in past tense, offer and acceptance, ajabo kobul, say in mature, if minor, must understand nature of transaction. Buyer and seller, muta aquadine, unconditional contract, a, under reasonable conditions, b, under unreasonable condition but in market practice, example warranty of one year on sale of fridge, c, sale must be non-contingent, sale must be immediate, not deferred to future, example property must pass on sale date not on future date, conditions of contract, shariti act, contract or transaction, Act, seller must have title and risk specific and quantified capable of delivery, possession, example unconstructed flat having no base, capable of ownership, title, example not sea, sky, usable, example not a pig or alcohol, valuable, example, 
not a stone or leaf existible sold good or subject matter, mu b, specific and certain, mutation, example currency etc., quantified, malum, price, taman, constructive, hakmi, example possession of documents or keys of a car, physical, hakiki, delivery or possession, kabsa, only in respect of movable goods, not immovable, valid sale, pay i sehich. 5 kiyars. The term kiyar refers to the option or right of the buyer and seller to rescind a contract of sale. There are 5 kiyars in a sale contract which are as follows. A. Kiyar e shart, optional condition. At the time of sale buyer or seller can put a condition that he has an option to rescind the sale within the specific 4 days. This option is called kiyar e shart. Specification of the days is necessary for this kiyar. Within this period, he has the right to rescind, dissolve the sale without any reason. If the buyer puts the condition, it is called kiari mashtari, option of buyer, and when put by the seller, it is called kiari bai, option of seller. This kiar is not transferred to heirs. b. Kiari royat, option of inspecting goods, where the goods can be returned after inspection. This applies automatically to all contracts. Example buys machinery from B without seeing. However, A has the option to return the machinery after inspection. C. Kiari Abe, option of defect, where the goods can be returned if found defective. It is the responsibility of the seller to supply goods free of error, defect or point out the defect to the buyer. No way is he allowed to cover the defect of the goods which constitutes as fraud. In one of the Hadiths, Prophet has stated he is not amongst us who indulges in fraud. Therefore the buyer has the right to return the good in case of a defect which is considered a defect in the market and which depreciates the value of the goods. Example A buys batteries from B. However, A has the option to return them to B if the batteries are found to be defective or not in working condition. D. Kiari Wasf, Option of Quality where the goods are sold by specifying a certain quality by the seller but which is absent in the goods. Example A buys a car from B who has specified automatic transmission of the car. However when A uses the car, he finds the transmission to be manual. Therefore he can return the car to B in the absence of a specific quality. E. Kiari Garban, Option of Price where the seller sells the goods at a price which is far expensive than the market price. A buyer has the right to return it to the seller. Example a Parker pen is sold to a by B at a price of 500 slash. However after the sale, A discovers its market price to be 250 slash, he has the option to return the pen to B. I Carla, Recession of Contract where parties freely consent to rescind the contract that is each party will give back the consideration received by it. Neither the buyer nor the seller has the sole right to rescind the contract after execution of a contract. Often the buyer wants to rescind the contract after buying goods. In this case, it is necessary that he gets the seller's consent. Therefore this mutual agreement between buyer and seller to rescind the contract is called Ikala. In one of the Hadiths, Prophet has stated he who does the Ikala, rescinding of the contract, with a Muslim who is not happy with his transaction, Allah will forgive his sins on the day of judgment. However, it may be noted that the price of the goods being returned under Ikala will remain unchanged. Effect on third parties, Ikala is treated as a new sale as if a new contract is entered into between the parties rescinding the original contract. Section 4 Islamic Modes of Financing Musharaka Hadith Sequency Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala has declared that he will become a partner in a business between two Musharaks until they indulge in cheating or breach of trust. Yana. Definition and Classification of Musharaka The literal meaning of Musharaka is sharing. The root of the word Musharaka in Arabic is shirka, which means being a partner. It is used in the same context as the term shirk meaning partner to Allah. Under Islamic jurisprudence, musharaka means a joint enterprise formed for conducting some business in which all partners share the profit according to a specific ratio while the loss is shared according to the ratio of the contribution. 
It is an ideal alternative for the interest-based financing with far-reaching effects on both production and distribution. The connotation of this term is little limited than the term shirkum more commonly used in the Islamic jurisprudence. For the purpose of clarity in the basic concepts, it will be pertinent at the outset to explain the meaning of each term, as distinguished from the other. Shirka means sharing and in the terminology of Islamic fiqh, it has been divided into two kinds. 1. Shirkat al-milk, partnership by joint ownership. It means joint ownership of two or more persons in a particular property. This kind of shirka may come into existence in two different ways. A. Optional, ikshari, at the option of the party's example, if two or more persons purchase equipment, it will be owned jointly by both of them and the relationship between them with regard to that property is called shirkat al-milk ikshari here this relationship has come into existence at their own option as they themselves elected to purchase the equipment jointly. b. Compulsory, Gerakshari, this comes into operation automatically without any effort, action taken by the parties. For example, after the death of a person, all his heirs inherit his property, which comes into their joint ownership as a natural consequence of the death of that person. Continued in Part 3. Compiled by Hussein Fahmy.